Hello everyone, I am Gautam Verma, a junior software developer from Indore, India. Uh, currently, I am a software developer at ETH India Fellowship and uh, a mentor at Google Summer of Code 2023 under the Liquid Galaxy organization, where I am mentoring the various students in helping in helping to contribute to an open source. And uh, recently, I have worked with various open source organizations like uh, and programs like uh, Google Summer of Code 2022 and 2021. And I'm also a contributor at Summer of Bitcoin 2022. And apart from the developing works and the coding ecosystems, I have uh, been involved in uh, the technical content writings and uh, the documentation development under the Gigs for Gigs. And at there, I develop a lots of content for uh, students who is uh, who wants to uh, learn a core concepts of programming languages and uh, and wants to learn more about the technical stuff. At there, I have designed a lot of uh, uh, technical content for a student and uh, help about uh, 10,000 students to understand the core concepts of uh, programming languages and the networking stuff. Um, currently, I am a pursuing master's from Devi Ahilya University and in a final year, I am going to graduate in 2020. 2024 in April and I'm also seeking for a full-time jobs uh, in the cloud infrastructures or uh, in the junior level or a backend level because because of my uh, working experience in various field I have an ability to customize myself in any field for at initial level so I'm looking for a job if you have any openings please get me touch via email i have mentioned the qr code in the bill like in the bottom of my my presentation slides so you can find it and please reach out to me if you have any openings in your companies and uh, if you are hiring for any role which is related to software developments and uh, and the the documentations and devrel related so for today we are here to discuss about the, the various options that is available for networking in kubernetes and uh, for, for this, I have designed for a, a particular agenda for discussing about the Kubernetes uh, networkings, why networkings and importance of networking, like why we are doing inside doing networking inside of Kubernetes and the various options that is available for networking in Kubernetes. That are our main major, major uh, like uh, the major point of discussions, like what options are actually available for networkings and, uh, and how to select uh, and uh, how to select the best option for for working because the thing is uh, there are various tools and system that is this that is available for networking but uh, we are not going to use all of them for our project right so our main task is to is to is to like identify which systems or a protocol is best for our project and uh, and according to that we will select our our uh, networking tools for our kubernetes environment so i will i will show you I, like i will i will try to figure out some parameters that can help you to select uh, the best network uh, option for working in kubernetes environment so let's move ahead so before understanding about uh, the networking in kubernetes it is good to have a brief intro about what actually kubernetes is and what is networking because probably this is an this is this is this is in sessions for a beginner and intermediate level so so there is a basic definition about kubernetes uh, for the beginners like kubernetes is also known as k8s it is uh, commonly abbrevi abbreviated as ks8s and it is an open source container uh, container orchestration platform that basically automates the deployment scalings and management of containerized applications um, the kubernetes is actually developed by google's and now it is maintained by the cloud native foundation which is also known as cncf and uh, the thing is in simple terms if we say the kubernetes allows you to basically manage and automate the deployment and scales of your applications across the clusters of computer by by doing this it becomes more easy for a developer and the whole entire team to control and manage their their development and deployment process because if we do all the things by 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 like standalone uh, environment then it will becomes a hard for us to manage all the things together and to take care of all the things at a different unit 
So it, as I said, that it's it's uh, help us to deploy and manage the concurrent applications, and it basically provide an abstraction layer that allows you to define your applications and their dependency in, in a declarative ways, so that we don't have any undeclared or any ambiguous in uh, things inside of our uh, our environment. This this actually makes easy to, to the deploy and manage the applications across the multiple environment, and. Uh, like one of the uh, like one of um, other features of uh, the Kubernetes is scale applications, um, which automatically uh, scale your applications based on demands, and uh, you don't need to worry about manually scaling up or down traffic. It can perform all the stuffs automatically, and uh, along with this, it provides the the monitoring features. Uh, like there are very various wider uh, varieties of tools that provide you the logs and metrics and health checks and with the help of this uh, components we can easily monitor our node and figure out if there any problem is existing in our future in, in features or in, a, in our systems by using these tools we can also prevent our, our applications from any unwanted security breaches and any unwanted issues that may cause due to any any problem or any any like any any problem or any minor bug that can cause a huge problem so, and apart from this uh, the the main thing that kubernetes provide is actually a update update like the uh, like kubernetes pro have a great community and they are they are building the the features day by day and, and increase the reliability of uh, the kubernetes environment rapidly so this is the best way to like deploy or manage your applications in 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 containerized manner so that's all about the kubernetes so let's move further about the networking with kts which, which is basically a networking with a kubernetes so uh, in kubernetes networking is it can be said that the fundamental concept that enables the communication between different component of uh, distributed uh, applications uh, that is running actually on the kubernetes clusters and uh, and by this it's provide a powerful networking model that allows containers and service to communicate with each other across the multiple nodes in the clusters so cluster is nothing but uh, but a group of uh, virtual machines or group of computer that is working together and uh, and sharing some informations and uh, and and running the application for it so like uh, it is Crucial component for managing containers applications, which allows to communicate with each other, as I said, that and with within the external with, with the external networks. So, like whenever we need to uh, like communicate with external networks, we need to have some networking networking so that we can we can path, find a path or route to share to share the data or to like communicate with each other. Um, there are some basic uh, concepts in Kubernetes like uh, the pods, services, labels, and selectors, and uh, and some pod like networks plugins. So it is good if we have uh, the basic understanding of uh, general components like what is cluster. So as I said, that a cluster in Kubernetes is said to be a node. You uh, usually refer to a physical or virtual machines that works together to to run a container like to run a containerized applications. And uh, a cluster typically includes the control plane, which manage the overall states of the clusters, and one or more worker node, which runs the containerized applications. And uh, the the another component of the networking is a container. So container is can be said a lightweight, a portable unit of software that includes everything, like everything that is needs to run an applications, like uh, including coding, code, dependency, comments. <laughs> and uh, the running the running environments and uh, the things are uh, the unique things about the container is that it provide a consistent run times environment that can be easily moved between different systems and platform so this is the most uh, unique thing I, I like about the container that it can be a portable or easily moved between the different systems and platform and the, the third component is basically known as pod as i said that a post is the smallest deployable unit in kubernetes and uh, it is represent as a as, like it represent as a single instance of a con of a container right and uh, uh, pods are usually um, 
like used to group one or more container together and provide a shared network and stored environment among them and uh, if we see that cni cni basically stands for the container network interface which is um, which is a which is like a standard for a configuring network interfaces for linux containers and uh, and the CNI plugins are used to provide uh, networking capabilities for container in Kubernetes, such as isolations, load balancing, and service, service discovery. So load balancing is somewhat like dividing the load across the multiple nodes and uh, so that a workload doesn't uh, becomes uh, hard or like, uh, like, like didn't over a single node. So the workloads divided into a, into a several nodes so that uh, they can divide their work and perform very well in their services and uh, the last component is known as the in ingress which which is like uh, which provides a way to expose http and HTTPS, https routes from outside the cluster to services within the cluster like basically it's provide the routes from outside the cluster to services within the cluster and uh, in ingress can be used to configure a load balancers or a reverse proxy that routes traffic to the appropriate service based uh, on the requested url so like this this all are the major components that is required while while we do a networking with kubernetes and uh, yeah that's all about the networking with kubernetes so now you guys might be thinking about why we need networking and what is actually importance of uh, networking in kubernetes so the thing is networking plays a critical aspects of building and deploying the containerized applications in kubernetes and uh, there are some reasons why networking is important in kubernetes firstly it provides uh, the communication between containers because without containers like there is no means of communications and uh, like no sharing of data between the containers and cluster that is actually deployed across the multiple nodes. So they need to have a communication with each other in order to provide a con con like conceive applications and uh, and with the help of networking, uh, it provide a way for a container to communicate with each other and even if they are running on different nodes. So yeah, networking is is like uh, is essential for having a communication between between the nodes and containers and uh, it's uh, it's like uh, if we use the networking it's provide the supports of load balancing and uh, as we all know that the load balancing plays an important role while we are running applications or like while we are running a big application of our systems so kubernetes uh, like services uh, like uh, can be used to distribute the network traffic across a set of ports and uh, by by performing the same functions and uh, this provides a load balancing capability that can help to ensure that applications are responsive and available for a user to use it. So that's the all reason why networking is more important in Kubernetes. So yeah, here are the main part of our presentation starts and uh, hopefully you, are, you guys are enjoying my presentations. Uh, so let's see the, like the, uh, in this presentations we will discuss the four options that are available for networking in k s that is the CDM, calico lendl and view all these four are the open source and managed by the different organizations and the CDM is actually a own 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 project of core cloud native but the three are the different belongs to the different open source organizations so it is good if we if we talk about one by one what actually CLM is and uh, the use cases of CLM, the features of CLMs, and the architectures of all this, all these options. And at the end, we will discuss uh, and how to select the networking options while with like which is suitable or desired for our project. So let's see one by one. So uh, Cilium is basically, as I said, that it, it is an open source project that provide a networking and security for a containerized application that is running inside of Kubernetes clusters. Um, it is basically designed to provide a high performance, scalable and secure networking for a microservices beta based applications. Uh, like as of nowadays, if we are using or like having a, having application that runs the microservices based so it is good to use the CLMs for 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 the networking because at 
because the thing is at the high level celiums extend the kubernetes api with the networks and security policies uh, and it also uses the ebf which is extended berkeley packet filtering uh, and this basically provides the fastest and efficient packet filter forwarding, uh, which is actually a need in the today world to to like uh, to 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 do a packet filtering in an efficient manner and also provide the forwarding me mechanism. And uh, this basically uh, this basically also uh, allows Celiums to provide the advanced networking features like uh, service discovery and uh, the load balancing and network segmentations. So if like the thing is the CDMs provide the more than enough advanced features to handle our applications and uh, and to provide the basics or advanced uh, network that is actually uh, required for running the big or like uh, the heavyweight application that includes a lot of microservices and uh, Apart from the security features like micro segmentations, it also have the incre encryptions and uh, and and hopefully you guys are aware of aware of that the the distributed denial of services. So Celiums have and the protection policies against the the DDoS and uh, it provide our applications from such types of attacks. And as I, as you can see that it provides the provide the features of service load balancing and scalable Kubernetes CNIs, which means that we can scale up, scale down the applications without having a, any 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 like major problem or without having having any any complexity while scaling or scaling up, scale down the Kubernetes CNIs, and uh, it also provides the features of multiple colors connectivity it means that we if we want to connect uh, our cluster with uh, any uh, with another cluster then we can easily uh, do that uh, with the help of the CDMs. the things which excites me the most about CDMs is it's provide the more than enough information for a developer who wants to work with it and they have a uh, really uh, in detailed in in detail information about each and every features they they provide like if user wants to um, provide a multi cluster connectivity in the systems they have their uh, separate documentations for the, for for this and uh, and inside of this they will they have like more than enough information about uh, how which how you can how you can cluster your connectivities uh, with multiple clusters and uh, and yeah it also includes all the exceptions that may occur while 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 like while while connectivity and uh, the thing is you will find more than enough more than enough information about uh, the working of environment uh, like, like i would like to um, like share some features or or like like key features that CLMS includes is is, is that like there is a layer 7 visibility inside of CLMS. So it's provided deep visibility in, into applications level graphics, including the ability to view and analyze the API calls, RPCs, and database queries. So th this is also a unique features of CLMs. Basically, it provides a transparency for a developer to 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 see like what actually is is going behind of uh, the process and uh, what actually the things actually looks like like API calls and RPC and database query. So and uh, as I said, it is provided distributed denial of service protections, and uh, like it prevent uh, the system from these attacks by by rate limiting and IP blocking and packet filtering, filtering techniques, to, and uh, yeah, it actually it uses this technique to prevent applications from DDoS attacks. And uh, as like uh, this, the system provide the communications across or like uh, provide a networking across the cluster. So it is important to provide a secure communications. So the thing is, CLM supports the encrypted communications between services using the TLS, and it it also enforces mutual TLS authentication service between between the clusters. And uh, and yeah, this is all about uh, the features and basic intro about the CLM. And now let's see how the what how the architectures of CLMs looks like. So as you can see that in the architectures of CLMs uh, interact with the uh, it basically uh, like consider of a major components like a network policy policy service and load balancing, flow and policy loggings, and uh, the matrix to monitor or uh, to monitor the nodes like with the help of Prometheus and Grafana. 
and uh, the 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 like the, like this architecture should work in the flow like a users interact with the kubernetes api server to deploy applications or to modify the network security policies for the applications and then the kubernetes api server communicates the changes to the cnm network policy engines then the cnm network policy engine process the changes and generate a set of networks and security policies and uh, after doing this cnm agents programs ebff e BPF to enforce the policy for all uh, incoming and outgoing traffic to the contractor running as a node. As traffic flows between the container in the clusters, EBFF will filter and forward the packet forwarding to the defi uh, like defined policies. And uh, the thing is, if the packet is blocked by EBF, the Cilium client uh, logs uh, the event and can optionally send an alert to an external system like uh, siem or like a logging solution which is provided by the grafana and prometheus so this this is all about the architecture of uh, the cilium so another option is for the networking is calico which is developed by the tigara and it's provided uh, like it is also an open source uh, networking options and provide a security solutions for containerized applications in cloud netting environment and it provide a highly scalable flexible network fabric that uh, connect the container applications running on a multiple nodes and clusters this architecture is basically based on the distributed control plane where the, each node runs an agent that communicate with another agent to distribute the network policies and routing information and uh, the major features of uh, this this uh, this tool is net interpolit interpolatability network policies and optimized performance and uh, like it it uh, like while while we're talking about the network policies inside of Calico, it provides a full Kubernetes network policy supports with work with the original reference implementations of Kubernetes network, network policies, which means that this is more aligned with the network. This this tool is actually more aligned with the network policies, which is actually originally implemented by the or like originally adapted by the Kubernetes. And one more thing about this, it also supports the wirecard in, in, in encryption. So it it like like it can be said that extended version or extended um, term that provide a high a high network policies for and, and high network securities in the communications and uh, it provide the interpol interportability which means that it, it will be able to work work with the non -co non kubernetes workloads also so so it it means that it is compatible it is it, it is like more compatible as comparing to as compared to the uh, like another tools so here the architecture states that uh, we are having the two nodes node 1 and node 2 which is connected by the control plane nodes inside of node 1 we have the calico and inside of node 2 we also have a, a we also have a calico which enforcing the policy policies with each, with each other so there is a basic uh, working features of uh, the a uh, calico this this like this diagram states more than i, I more than i i explain about the calico so the uh, another option is flannel so flannel is uh, flannel is also an a network fabric that actually provides the communication between the, the container applications and the, the the things is the it Overlays networks is implemented using a variety of backend options, which is actually including the XV, uh, VXLAN, which is virtual extended LAN and UDP protocols, or or can be said uh, connectionless protocol, user data comp uh, packets. It is it is actually the ideal choice for a medium-sized Kubernetes cluster or a medium-sized product without having any complexity of advanced features. Suppose if we wants to work with like we are working with a project which which do not require any advanced working or advanced involvement of networking. So flannel is a good choice for 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 using for use. And uh, like there are like there are some components of flannel is like flannel ID, ADCD, and encapsulation method. Flannel ID is nothing but the main daemon that that manage the flannel networks on each node uh, in, in the cube like in the cube. The, uh, Kubernetes clusters. As you can see that in this diagram, there is a flannel ID which representing the complete node, and here we we have also a flannel ID which which representing this this node. And uh, etcd is basically a distributed key which is store uh, 
which is stored by a flannel to store and read type the information configuration about like the network configuration information like what is the IP address of systems and uh, and the configurations which is usually comes inside of uh, networking and uh, the third component is encapsulations method and uh, this method is basically used for routing and IP packets between the nodes and uh, that actually includes the UDP and XLAN and host DB. So we can say that this are the major uh, like major components of the flannels and uh, this option is basically um, great for great choice for a mid medium to uh, medium to small size projects which which do not in, involve like any any advance um, or like any like any like which do not involve any advanced networking if we want to work with some basics component we can use the flannel for our test all the flannels have an capability to perform or handle the high project and large project but it is good for a small and uh, medium size project or can be said that ideal for a small and medium size project as we can see the cluster which are having the flannel id and they are they are communicating via xvx LAN tunnel that is a virtual extension extensible LAN, which can be a virtually extend extendable for for this uh, presentation that is view net and it also helps to communicate um, like to like to perform a communication between a cluster and kubernetes it basically create a virtual network that's connect the docker containers across multiple hosts and provide the dns imap distributed um, virtual firewalls and other subsystems and uh, it is actually a, actually a system that is that is more more attached with the docker containers and uh, and, uh, and 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 like it also automates the recovery and enhances the securities of uh, the communications this basically provides a major three features like according to me it's a major three features for for working environment and and desired or like needs in the working environment like multicasting networking encapsulation method and resilience and scaling resilience and scaling is the concept which is provided by the view net to resilient and adaptable like to provide a resilient and adaptable containers network that simply like simplifies the connectivity and security for a distributed application product across a diverse environment so resilience is a, is is more like important or like uh, like uh, important while we are doing a networking because uh, if because in, in like while doing a networking it is okay to share the communications or like it like to share uh, information between the nodes but it, apart by like along with the sharing and communication it is also to provide a great uh, security while having having in the like communication otherwise there is no make like like otherwise it makes no sense in, the, in like in the today world so it is important to have a resiliency and scaling in inside of uh, network options and uh, Apart from this, it provides the multicasting networking also. So it 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 uses a multicasting DNS and GI mapping screen to efficiently perform the multicasting inside of the the network. And uh, the other thing is it provides an encapsulation method also, which is uh, VXLAN with the help of the VXLAN, VXLAN encapsulation method to create an overload network for uh, uh, connecting the containers with each other. So this is all about the view net and uh, now let's took the final opinion and like uh, the final point about the presentation like which one is the best options and uh, how to select uh, uh, the networking options the thing is like all of them all of them all of them are working very well in their their own manner the thing is what actually you need and your project is, needs to have inside of like like for working each of uh, them having the great security each of them provide a uh, high reliability each of them have the their own working environment the, each of them having a great community supports each of them having uh like having a pattern of uh, their working each of them represent uniquely in in the network options so basically uh, you need to select according to your uh, according to the desire of the project and according to the requirements of projects like uh, the, the like the calico like when we talk about the architecture uh, the calico use the B, bgp based distributed control panel 
plane while the selenium use ep bf based hybrid data planes and uh, plan will use overlays and uses the vxlan and uh, view, view overlays uses the proprietary protocols so each of them are using a different protocols for working so it is your choice to like which architecture word which you wants to use and which you wants to use inside of your project when we talk about the scalability the calico provide the highly scalable and support large supports of clusters with the high node densities and CDMs also provide the high scalable support clusters and high node density but uh, while, while we're talking about the flannel we have the limited scan like scalability for a for a large cluster as we discussed that it is a ideal choice for having for project from uh, small to medium and uh, view view also provide the highly scalable supports large and high density nodes and uh, while we're talking about the security purpose and like like calico supports the network security policies encryptions and workload identity while uh, the celiums have the ports of, of zero trust networkings and uh, supports the eb pf based quality informants this like Celium basically are like more like, like it's provide a more security as comparing to the uh, the other 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 networking options and uh, flan if we talk about the flannel in the like in the respective of the security it's provide the basic security features which provide the supports of network isolations and the encryptions of the communications and the views provide the advanced security features and policies workloads and uh, work like sorry the workload identity and also uh, having a network policy encryptions so you have need to define the policies for this and in, and use accordingly to to your project uh, requirements and needs we have some other parameters also like performance easy of use and integrations community supports while we're talking about, about the performance and uh, like the CDMs, Calico and Vue have the high performance uh, and because of their architectures and the, the encapsulations and like packet processing methods and microprocessing service while the flannel having also having a ha having a good performance if we if we use the if we use if we if we use flannel in the medium or, or small term project but if we use flannel in the hard high high or like uh, large project it might create a big problem for like no not actually the problem like heavy weight or like uh, it may affect uh, the performance if we if we use the heavy weight right and uh, thing is easy of use and integration is like uh, like like uh, a, a calico provide a good in, like in, uh, integrations with the uh, with the kubernetes and the cloud providers and it is also too easy at deployment and configuration also and the CLMs provide a good integration with kubernetes isodo and other tools and it is also an easy deployment and configurables the thing is the things about the view is also similar to the calico and CLMs and uh, the flannel is also lightweight and simple and it is also an easy to deploy and configure like there is no any hard or like is like there is no any any problem that cause while using or while integration this this tool because all of them are having a great documentations and community supports and uh, the things are already updated and all the bugs are actually they are they are removing from if there if there is any uh, bug or any issue or uh, they are actually continue like like continuously uh, developing or uh, removing the issues from the code base and providing the best solution for the user who are using this networking tool inside of kubernetes so the thing of best choice overall i will say that it's all depend on you like which tools you want to use because my personal view with the, like my, my personal opinion for all of them are really good because all of them are having a great and unique like functionality it's all depends on the requirements of projects right uh, and uh, by using this uh, this parameters like performance and uh, scalability security and architectures we can easily select uh, uh, the best options for for our project and uh, use those inside of our kubernetes network if you have any questions you can reach out to me via emails here i have uh, attached the qr code to my emails and uh, yeah that's all about my presentations i hope you like my presentations about uh, the various options that is available inside of uh, kubernetes networkings i hope you like uh, my presentations 
and uh, the thing is this times i am supposed to give the virtual presentations because of some issue in my visas process and uh, hopefully i will able to, to deliver the presentation in 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 person as an in person in the upcoming event in north america which is the cube con cloud native in north america 2023 probably that event is going to be in the november if, if i'm not wrong yeah that is in the november hopefully to see you guys there and yeah please the thing is at the last i want to say that uh, as i'm the student and studying in the final year i'm seeking for a job if you have any job please again reach out to me i i love to have connection with you and discuss the role if there is any available for it thank you so